Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Sign up for GoToMeeting and use the promo code START to receive your free trial. And by LiquidWeb, a leader in managed web hosting exactly. since 1997. Today on the program, Kevin O'Connor, an internet legend. He created DoubleClick. I met him when we had 10 people in his company on 23rd Street. Changed the internet forever uh, in Web 1.0, and he's changing it again with findthebest.com. Stick with us. Hey, everybody. <laughs> We're starting the show off with an insight from Tyler. Start the show. Um, hey, it's going to be an amazing episode today. That sound means only one thing. Tyler is, going, is with us and is going to have an incredible insight today. Is it going to happen? The pressure's on. The pressure is on. Uh, and hey, if you want to join the back channel, the back chat. Hey, and by the way, if this is your first time watching the show, the show's name is This Week in Startups. Let me tell you what it's about. Startups, entrepreneurship, starting companies, changing the world, being a samurai and not a rice picker. Nothing wrong with picking rice. If you want to go hit the fields and get the rice and collect it for the samurai, go right ahead. The world needs rice for the samurai to eat. But this is for the people who want to slash and tear and murder and maim and change the world and have really cool armor and swords. Now that we've got that through, 99% of you can go back to picking rice and the 1% who are samurai can stick with us. And if you are a true samurai of samurais, join the back channel where you can debate and discuss the show with Tyler, myself, and Carolyn, and all the other super fans, twistlist.co. Join for as little as $2 a month. Uh, hey, the twist list is just on fire. I cannot keep up with the discussions no. anymore on that list. There's yeah. 250 people, yeah. and they're just like, here's an idea for a business, now, here's an idea for a business, here's yeah. it. And they're all now, remember like two years ago, we were like, we should do something at South by Southwest? I was just about to say. And they're like, we're, this is what we're doing. Yes. And I'm like, oh, I thought, <laughs> do I get to say this anymore? They're like, no, no, we're doing this at South by, we're doing this at launch, we're having a pre-dinner, we're having a panel discussion. Yeah. I mean, they're just off to the races. And every, the guys that I meet from there, I'm consistently surprised these are the guys who have had companies and yeah. I thought it would be cool originally stuff. like the as aspirational That's samurai, what I thought and too. there are, there is an aspirational contingent, yes. but now it's like legit samurai on yes. the list who's like somebody is asking a question. Hey, how do I make this? And they're just like, oh, that's a C corp, that's an S corp, that's an LLC. You want to do this convertible yeah. note? Blah blah blah. Read these three articles. Da, 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 and it's just unbelievable. A lot of knowledge in there. Yeah. A lot of knowledge. Hey, and one thing you should be knowledgeable about is Liquid Web. Just so you guys know how we do the advertising on this program, we select the advertisers. We only pick the best of the best products we know we can stand behind because I have to read the commercial live. And I'm not going to read the commercial for e-cigarettes or something like that. Like, literally, the e-cigarette people were like, oh my god, I'm like, you really think I'm going to let, I'm going to go on television, interweb TV and say, smoke e-cigarettes. And they're like, well, buy your buy-in for the World Series of Poker. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is free will. People can decide if they want for themselves to smoke those cigarettes. I was like, no, no, no. I'm not yeah. going to pimp for electronic That's cigarettes. That's what to do. You're not doing it either. Call me. Call me, e-cigarette <laughs> companies. <laughs> can you imagine, though, like... Doing a commercial for an e-cigarette company, like no. nobody has any idea what that's doing. That's got to no. be worse than actually smoking the cigarettes. <laughs> uh, hey, but Liquid Web is flawless, and they have 24-hour support, 365 days a year. It's a heroic support team. Everybody knows Liquid Web. And they're just fantastic. They do give great service. If you need um, some dedicated servers, managed web hosting, these are the guys uh, to go see, and gals. And they've got unbeatable customer support. Natural disaster neutral states like Michigan and Arizona. Nothing bad happens in Arizona and Michigan. Uh, you're not going to have any uh, natural earthquakes or anything. It's just literally like nothing Famous bad. last words. No, right nothing there. bad ever happens there. <laughs> Nobody ever stubs their toe. Nobody I ever has their car I'm robbed. I'm from Michigan. Right, so you can so. confirm there's nothing bad happens there. No, I think he's saying something he Oh, he said the S word. Oh, 10 bucks. No, I, I pulled it. You pulled it? I pulled it. I feel like it's 7.50. Well, did you snap the wrist? Got, got to go to the judge. Yeah. Carolyn, can we go to the replay? <laughs> Cue it no up. No one's ever done it in the first sentence, have they? I think in the first sentence, it's probably a record. That I think you're in for the... I think you you should, brought up Michigan. This could, yeah. It's an emotional... This could be an expensive and show for you. You got a Michigan logo right here. I do? No, that's MailChimp. That's the Michigan logo. It is? Okay, well, Michigan and Mighty Mouse and MailChimp. 
hey, thanks Liquid Web, and go to thisweekend.com slash Liquid Web for $100 in free hosting. Thank at Liquid Web on your Twitter account, your Google Plus account, your Facebook account, your Rise account, your MySpace account, your Orchid account, and your Convo account. Oh, some of those may be discontinued. Convoy, just sit down. I know. I like Leah. Yeah. I but they're doing something else. They have this like IRC thing where you pay for IRC. So everyone's like, oh, the c company, they just pivoted. Yeah. I think female founders get like, anytime people can attack female founders, they do. I don't think there's any attack going on. It is. They were like, oh, it's shut down. It's a failure. And it's like, oh. no, they just went to paid private IRC for companies, which so, is something that I would have paid for. So did um, the one that came out around the same time, if you remember, chill? was... Uh, no, no, no. The one, yeah, which is now pivoted. Which is pivoted chill. to video Pinterest. Well, no, but before chill, it was something that was very similar to... Um, oh, those guys were doing... Namesake. Namesake, exactly. Namesake, which yeah. was like a twit. Yeah, so listen, communication is hard to get right. Anyway, I'm but super... It's funny that both of them pivoted into other things. Absolutely. Hey, we're six minutes into the program, and that means it's, start to, it's time to start our interview. I met Kevin O'Connor back in 1995 or 96, probably 95, uh, when I was starting a little photocopy rag called the Silicon Alley Reporter, and he was founding a little company that wanted to do advertising on the web. Uh, it was called DoubleClick, and it was started out of an office, if I remember correct, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I met you at Poppy Tyson on 23rd Street between 6th and Broadway, Broadway and 6th, yeah. north side of the street, 2nd and 3rd floor. South side. South side, Poppy Tyson. Is that where DoubleClick was founded? Is that right? No, nah, we started in, in my basement in Atlanta. Basement in Atlanta. Yeah. Now, what was the was there an original name for DoubleClick? Was there a name before it? Or was it always DoubleClick? Yeah, sure. you know, it's a little funky beginning because yeah. we were developing the technology and we were called uh, Internet Advertising Network. Our first the I A N. I E N. E N. It was even worse than that. The first name was Internet Advertising Federation. I mean, how, wow, how <laughs> absolutely how nerdy, <laughs> Star Trek. Stupid is that? And then we were developing technology. Land long and yeah. click-throughs. And then we bumped into uh, a group that was selling with some of the first media sales guys. And they wanted to develop a network, but they didn't have any technology. Oh. And their name was DoubleClick out of Got Poppy Tyson. It. Four Got guys. It. So we spun Double it out. DoubleClick, Internet Advertising Network, DoubleClick's better name. Yeah. And you, so this is in 1995. 95, yeah. You decided that you would build a network for banner ads. Yeah. And was it, what, in 1994 that... Hotwire did the Zima banner ad. When did the first banner ad come out? I don't know. There's always a lot of people. A lot of debate, right? Yeah, a lot of debate. Um, 95, remember? 94, I don't even. Somewhere around then, the banner ads came out. Yeah. But websites had no ads on it. And at that time, correct me if I'm wrong, the idea of putting advertising on the internet in 1994 and 95 was considered sacrilegious. Yeah, we were, her yeah, we were the, hmm. the heretics. People were very upset internet about it. was free. It was government subsidized, you know. It was, right. Why would you ever corrupt a website by putting ads on it? Yep. But then people realized that in order to make content, you have to pay the content providers. Someone's got to put the bill. Right. What was it like going to advertisers in those days when you started DoubleClick? Like, did they even know what the internet was? At that point, people didn't have internet accounts. They had AOL accounts. Oh, no, no. It's not because it's like, why would we advertise the internet? There's no one on the internet. So it was a real catch-22. And, you know, the banner ads not the most, it wasn't the most exciting format in the world. It, Looking back on it, was that the biggest mistake in the history of the internet was the banner ad? I mean, it was, it, it's, if you, if you had, looking back on it, if you went with interstitials or, you know, the marquees and, the, and the, all the things that have come out since, it would have been twice as effective, right? We would have had less, I don't know, agita. And Probably, but you, I mean, back in the, you know, bandwidth wasn't that, that great. Ah, uh, that's true. Uh, the HTML wasn't, you know, wasn't super sophisticated, you know. Right. Ie one o, you know, yeah, just throw a gif up. Yeah, you're lucky to get a <laughs> to, to get a gif to work properly. So. Right. So now, I mean, JavaScript didn't exist. So, double click grew from just whatever a dozen people to thousands of people in five years, six years. Went public in '99 or something. Secondary offering. Went public in '98. '98. Yeah, but '99, I think we were 2,500 people, 25 countries. Wow. It was pretty crazy. And, and you were, you went from like mimeographed. To glossy in five <laughs> episodes. To 300 page, yeah. yeah. It, actually, it, it, that run would be t uh, in 30 issues, we went from a photocopy to 300 page glossy. And you guys were yeah. frequently number one in the, in the Silicon Alley 100 because you were the largest Silicon Alley company. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you down. remember? Do you remember our last meeting? It was pretty despairing. It was like after the dot com crash. You always right. had the the SAR one hundred. Right. And to be on that list. You know, it, was, it was a big deal. It was huge. Yeah, people debated it, and I numbered the list, which made people furious at Even me. Even pissed them off more, yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially well, when we, you know, I think you had us like number three or four. One year you years. guys dropped, I think, yeah. I don't remember why. I love rankings, right? No one ever, no one ever uh, looks to the rankings until right. they come out, and then they're. But it's interesting, what? like, people with, tw I, I was telling this to Mike Arrington when he got put on the Time 100 list. I said, you realize that like that list is made by people who haven't really accomplished as much as you have, and they're just sitting around a table eating bad Chinese food at eight o'clock at night trying to fill a list. Yep. I mean that's what we did. We we're just a bunch of kids eating cheap pizza, saying, well, well, "How do we order this list?" And I think your dog. How, basically, how important was your dog in the decision making process? The dog, the dog made a lot of just, if people. If, you, if Toro didn't like you, yeah, forget <laughs> it. Pissed on your name. Exactly. <laughs> that's not swear. That's, no, this okay. is okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that, the press means nothing. I mean, ultimately, when you're building a business, it's really... Well, I mean, I learned, <laughs> I learned it helped us and it hurt us, you know? Yeah, you guys had a meteoric rise, and then I guess the dot-com bust happened. But I remember you guys did a secondary offering, uh, like a, which is essentially a second IPO. Yeah. And you raised like $100 million at the time. Uh, it, was, it was like $700 million. Was it $700 million? I can't it remember. It was big. It was going to be a billion. Wow. And, and, this, and the market, we were, I think, one of the last companies you to are. raise money. Right. And then the market shut down for 10 years. I mean, it was, it was crazy. And I remember everybody saying, why is DoubleClick doing this? You guys had a profitable business at the time or could have been profitable. You had $100 million in the bank or more. And everybody's like, why are you doing this? I remember you saying to me very vividly, well, why not do it? What if the market, you know, if we, if, what if we're not able to do it in the future? And sure enough, the markets collapsed. Hey, our CFO was, Jeff Epstein was a brilliant guy. And I used to ask him that. We were doing like convertible debt. I'm like, what? I don't understand. Why are we raising money? Why, what, what, what? Yeah. I'm just a simple engineer, man. Right. Make, make it make sense to me. And he's like, Kevin, when people want to wanna buy, you, buy your stock, you, you sell it. Because right. it may not always be like this. Right. And the internet was crazy. I mean, right. I think if anything, what helped us is that it, it, we all believed in it, right? right. It was going to be huge, but it was pretty frothy. It was very frothy at that time, but you were one of the companies that actually had a real product. I mean, it provided a real service. Serving ads was critical. The market just got ahead of itself at that time. Uh, yeah. When you look back on it. Yeah, yeah. It eventually and, grew into it, but. And you left. That was crazy. We were at one time we were valued at, you know, and, and, and everyone was comparing that this is where we all ran the problems, right? Yeah. We were. Right we were there. valued at like $15 billion, right? right? And then we look at like Engage, and they were valued at, at $20 billion. And right. you know, we know we had a, a lot better business. And so everyone right. was doing relative compa comparisons with each other. It's like, right. we're worth at least twice as much as them. Well, right. okay, you gotta, they're worth maybe you know, $100 million. You know? right. It was never, yeah. we all got into the, you know, my two $5,000 cats are better than your $10,000 dog. Right, and it wasn't quite, the value wasn't there yet. No. And you know, we, in the end, we all got it right. Yeah, you guys were... All of us. I mean, the all internet us, turned yeah. out to be bigger than we... It actually did. ...ever thought it would be. Hey, so after it all, you, I think, handed over the reins to Kevin Ryan at some point. Yep. Who then went on to tremendous success today. He's had a great second act. He's, uh, I guess, doing um, Guilt Group, Guilt, yep. which has done a phenomenal business Mango, insider. Mango, ten, ten, uh, 10 Gen with Dwight yeah. Merriman. Yeah, he did a bunch of... He did a little incubator, and then I guess Gilt was the big winner out of that, and he focused on that. Um, but um, you then, I guess, went underground for a couple of years. What did you do? They kind of disappeared, didn't they? Yeah, you did. I, somebody told me, like, I, I saw you were friends with that guy, Kevin O'Connor. I, I saw him surfing up in Malibu. What did you just check out for five years and just take it all in? You know, I worked for 20 years, 80 hours, 80 hour weeks, and I loved it. Uh, right. uh, but eventually it got to the point where I, was never, I wasn't doing what I loved anymore. Double click wasn't. You know, I was dealing with lawyers and media and politicians, and I'm right. just a I'm, a, I'm a, I'm an engineer, I like to do product. Right. Um, so, you know, when the day came where I was no longer super passionate about, about going into work, it's like, okay, I gotta hand it over to, and Kevin Ryan was perfect. I mean, he yeah. loved dealing with, he loves dealing with politicians and, and lawyers and, yeah. and things like that, and, and it just wasn't me. So, I finally went and spent, you know, you, know, get, a, you get a new kid. I had a bunch of new kids that didn't, didn't, didn't know me. I had three kids. Wow. Um, I had a wife, and no one ever saw me. Wow. Uh, so, finally went someplace where uh, Santa Barbara, beautiful place. Yeah, amazing. 
So I spent you know a bunch of times. I was doing venture capital. And, yeah. And, and investing, but it's tough to get passionate about venture capital. Yeah. Why? Is, why is? Why do great entrepreneurs never make great venture capitals in your mind? I mean, I, I've never seen it really happen. I, I mean, think, maybe Reid Hoffman from LinkedIn would be the possible exception. I think they. I think we're pathological. You know. Mm. Ah. We just get obsessed with a singular thing, right? Uh, and can't let loose of it. And it's mm. our passions and our paranoias and and everything else that drives you. Yeah, I mean, you you or, can't be in order to have great success as a CEO, founder, entrepreneur. You you can't be very well balanced. It, it's an no. imbalanced sport. It takes a level of passion and commitment that leads to imbalance. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, dramatically. So I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out how do I get some semblance of balance back in my life. And VC, you thought would maybe give you enough action, enough of the action. Keep me in the game. Yeah, enough, en enough. Use the wisdom to help other people out. Right. Invest but it, your money, yeah. you know, but, but it's tough to get fired up. Right. Interested, but not. It's like being the lifeguard at the pool, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Insights from Tyler. <laughs> Insights from Tyler. It's like being as opposed to the lifeguard at the beach. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. not in the surf. You're yeah. lifeguard. Yeah. It's like towing somebody in rather than surfing the wave. Insights from Jason. Um, you you want to be in the water. You want to be splashing around. You don't want to be waiting for somebody to drown and then go out and save them. It's kind of boring. Yes, I think it is. So when you although you do get the chicks. Lifeguards do get yeah. chicks? Yeah, VCs get chicks too. <laughs> That's what I'm I saw my wife a little more. Yeah. 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 You do get a lot more time. The VC lifestyle, what, what, in your estimation, how many hours a week do you think most VCs work? I think the gray ones work a lot. Right. But the average VC, I mean, let's be honest here. Those guys are taking I mean, how many weeks vacation? They ain't working. Year? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've never seen anyone work in August, so. They, they take the entire month of August and go to Italy. December is pretty much shut down. December, they shut down around the 10th or 15th. They come back around the January 15th. They're in Aspen and Vail. Guys I worked with worked a lot. Yeah? Yeah. I, I feel like the great ones, like Sequoia and Kleiner, Benchmark, like those guys I see constantly hustling and working. They're not taking the six weeks off in the summer and the six weeks off in the winter. They'll take two weeks off or three weeks off, but not all of that. So when you look back on, the, on Web 1.0, what, what do you think? How, how do you reconcile the, the massive run-up and the crash and then the subsequent, everything actually came to fruition and then some? Yeah. yeah. How do you reconcile that? Um, what did we get right? What did we get wrong back in the day? You know, I mean, it was tough because I remember that at that time, right around 1999, 40% of people were dropping out of Harvard, Harvard uh, um, right. uh, MBA program to go into the Internet. Yeah. Uh, and so you know you had you had that at Stanford you had it everywhere right so people were leaving leaving Wall Street I mean you had just too much money uh, too many uh, IQ points chasing uh, a market too early mm. uh, and there was a lot of stupid stuff getting funded getting funded a lot of also run I mean how many remember Boo oh my God they spent one hundred fifty fifty million in a no. year no was it one hundred fifty yeah what was Boo Boo dot com I missed this one. It was like Swedish or London. Swedish or London or It was basically going to be Amazon. They never really knew. They didn't even have a product. Yeah, they had a domain they name. Doing, they were doing um, advertising, billboards. Advertising and billboards. Killer parties. Yeah. <laughs> we threw some good parties. I guess Boo. Boo had the best parties, killer. yeah. I mean, I think they blew through like, they B -O -O. probably had. B-O-O. B-O-O. And if you look it up. I think they blew 100 million. I yeah, guess. 100 million. 100, it, was, it was nine figures blown in under two years, clearly. Their idea was to sell luxury clothes online. Fashionable luxury clothes. So in a way... Just 10 years early. It, in a way, it was Guild Group, <laughs> but funded better than Guild Group. Hey, you know what's a great... I remember, you remember Evite, right? I and mean, it's still, still, Evite, a great, sure. still a great thing. Yeah. I think they were spending like $50 million. In, $50 million. You know, you could build Evite. A good engineer could build that in about a week. So Today, yeah. yeah. And they have. I mean, Paperless Post and Cocoa Dot are much better versions, and really? they were built in months. If I, how do you speed up Paperless Post? I don't understand the whole damn letter thing. It's supposed to be slow. It's supposed to, it's supposed to evoke. I think it's supposed to I evoke. I can't stand it. 
<laughs> well, you, the, it's the clicking and not opening quickly? Yeah, it's like slow. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're an engineer. Evolves, you're like, got... Just don't, I just want to know, when's the party? No, 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 and no. And then no, I forget no. when the party you, is. I go back this to This is it. a very important party for you to come to. Are they a sponsor? To. It's the Boo reunion. <laughs> Are they sponsoring this they show? Should be. He's, he's they should be. Yeah. Absolutely. They could be. Yeah. We both like it. You play poker or you don't play poker? I do. You do? Yeah. Oh, I got some games to invite you to. We got some good games down here. We had some famous, uh, we used to do uh, Guts. Oh, Guts is, that is just. That used to be insane. For people who don't know what guts is, essentially everybody holds a chip in their hand or not, and then drops and three it. Three cards, yeah. You three cards, and you drop, you're out. If you stay and lose, you got to match the pot. So it gets ridiculous. It, it's basically exponential gambling. And people, were, you know, it, we had pots that would get into. Yeah. We ruined. We ruined a guy's. He he lost all of his honeymoon money. Oh wow. Thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. I won't say his name. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I don't do that. Anymore. What Im what impresses you today? I mean, when you look at the marketplace and you, and you see things coming to fruition, when you look at it and go, "Wow, that's really well executed." I mean, you know, when I looked, I think I think LinkedIn is one of my. I think it started out really kind of sketchy, not not good at all. Uh, How so? Like ganky? Like poor design? It just wasn't. Yeah, poor design. Just it didn't really make sense. And it's one of those startups I think that evolved and revealed itself over time, and you, you realize. Everyone has just put all of the professional personal information uh, information yeah. into the system. Now it's you know it's a huge huge lead gener sales sales lead generation. Yeah, I, I love stuff. I love data where people take uh, silos of worthless mm -hmm. data and are able to combine them to make it extremely powerful. Which is sort of what you've done now with Find the Best. And I, when I first saw it, and boy, has it looked better than the first version. Yes. When I first saw it, it was like. Excel spreadsheets of information, and I said, wow, this is a really interesting idea because this is what I do when I'm trying yeah. to figure something out, and I saw ski resorts, and I would put like, oh yeah, you know, like, how many trails do they have, or whatever, I, you, know, ha, you know, all the statistics about it, and try to make some sort of decision based on data, and here, look at this, find the best, I'm pulling it up on my screen, such a good idea, and you can compare ski resorts and see, I guess you have the smart rating, I don't know what that is, that's new. But it's like a Metacritic where we take a, mm. like a, 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 a yeah. five or six different ratings and normalize it into a single rating. Got it. Um, and so here you have all of them, and then I could just say, oh, let's just do what city and state, and I can narrow down. Oh, here, children's. I want to do children's ski schools. Number I need one daycare. Number one choice, by the way, children's ski schools. Absolutely, like because that's what it's like. The number one thing people are looking for. Yeah, and I want uh, skiable acres. I want something above. I don't know. A thousand acres? No, five, 400 acres, 300 acres. Uh, and I want it to be within uh, 500, 300 miles, 200 miles of where we are right now, which I don't know if there are any. And boom. Yeah, you're probably not going to get anything. I probably won't. You're in LA. Exactly. <laughs> but wow. And you said you Bear Mountain. I don't know if Bear Mountain showed up. Oh, but. it's terrible, yeah. Um, but anyway, the idea here is to let people make better decisions quicker. Yeah. So Metacritic for everything. What was it? What's the version? What's the idea here? The idea is to uh, uh, people have big decisions to make in life, right? right? And I thought the internet was going down a horrible path, sort of pre-panda. All the people that were winning, you know, I was looking for ski yeah. resorts, couldn't find yeah. anything. Looking for web hosting companies, it was just yeah. a bunch of affiliate shills, and it was right. just a bunch of misinformation. E how right? kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So a bunch of misinformation, affiliate-driven deals. And it's like you know, if we can give pages. people objective information to drive a decision, they'll make it quicker and more mm -hmm. informed and better. Um, and it's, we're driving a huge number of decisions. It's, it's. But you're not spamming the web with thousands and thousands of landing pages, so you're not going to beat them in the SEO game. That's got to be frustrating. No, because I think Panda. You know what? Yeah, Panda, Panda just absolutely decimated our business, yeah. and we were trying to spend. You know, fifty dollars a page on content, yeah. And we were up against competitors spending two or three dollars a page, and we yep. just got caught up in the whole roundup. I, I basically gave up on SEO. I think it's over. It's uh, largely over. I don't think it's over. I mean, you know, look, it, it, Google controls eighty percent of the traffic flow on the internet. So they, yeah. So what it's is it? Not over. Do you fear that Google looks at this business because now they have this Google, it's a Google Advisor, I think. Yes. It looks suspiciously like your site. Doesn't it? <laughs> um, I think they're, you know. Like here, I think like. We, tr we follow each other. Really? Because <laughs> look, here's Google Advisor on credit cards, and then you have credit card chooser and scooter chooser. 
I mean, is Google a content company at this point in your mind? Or a search company? Or a search company that's doing content? What do you, what's your... I, I mean, the search engines, I think, yeah. know that, that, that it's tough to use them to drive a decision, right? So Bing came out with the decision engine. Right. And we've all sort of seen vertical search is probably going to be the next area they got to really nail. And they did, you know, you got shopping comparison engines on one side. You got kayak and travel on the other side. But there's this whole range. And we were going after the the other thousand big decisions you make in your life. So vertical search is definitely gonna be a contested area over the next 10 years. Because it's good, you know, search is great for picking a needle out of the haystack, right. but who wants to pick a thousand needles out and put them together and, right. and be able to compare them side by side? Hmm. Uh, it just doesn't work. And Google tried it with Google Square, they try to automate it. Right. Doesn't work. Doesn't I mean, work. I mean, you tried to, you know, you, the human curation part is, yeah. it's a combination of the two. Yeah, I mean, doing, all, what we found was, even though we could make a search result that's 20% better than Google's, or 30%, consumers didn't react strongly enough to it, and Google wasn't gonna rank those pages. So Google says, well, no ixnay on the ranking of, you know, pages. They look at your stuff and say, we won't rank those pages because they're search results. I mean, we do well with Google. Yeah, for landing pages or for like the comparison pages? Uh, both. Yeah? Yeah. Because I know that they, they kicked out the comparison shopping engines at one point. The problem with those guys is, well, one of it's, 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 really, it's really a shopping, it's a really price comparison engine, right? right? So people are looking for you know, Nike tennis shoes and there's nothing to really compare. It's super thin content. Yeah. It's all the same everywhere you go. Right. Uh, all our right. stuff is more, it's, it's a lot more a lot more unique content. Right. Uh, when we get back from the commercial break, I want to talk about your strategy for building a business when you're essentially, uh, I think, going to wind up dead, dead against Bing and Google. And how, how do you do that? And what's your strategy? Um, and one strategy you're not going to have to worry about is what software to use for meetings. GoToMeeting is the clear winner. Getting everyone together for a meeting is super hard. We've done three, four hundred go to meetings in the last six weeks for the launch conference and um, I can tell you once in a while somebody says oh let's just go well, we'll catch up on Skype or Google chat or those services they never work you we always try to find the person add the person go to meeting it's one simple URL 17 different participants feature rich and you have dedicated servers and dedicated bandwidth and you never have to worry about oh is your, your privacy settings on right and the 20 minutes it takes to set up a call on one of those free services is not worth the trouble. Get a GoToMeeting account like I have and use the promo code START. And this is what they're uh, in the business of doing and that's why it's worth paying for it because if you take your meeting seriously, uh, some of these are meetings of a lifetime. You know, hey, if you get on the launch stage or you meet with an angel investor or a venture capitalist, you want to be taken seriously. Don't leave it to chance. Send a short URL from GoToMeeting and have everybody on the call, on time, and working perfectly. I use it every day, literally for the last 60, 70, 80 days. I've used it every day, multiple times a day, and it has never failed me. I refuse to go to meetings unless I'm setting up the call. That's how OCD I am. And that's how much I'm in love with that GoToMeeting. Thank you at GoToMeeting for sponsoring independent media like This Weekend Startups. Go ahead and say thank you at GoToMeeting on your Twitter account, your Facebook account, Google Plus, et cetera, et cetera. Tyler, you use GoToMeeting. I do. Somewhat daily. We use it. It's great. Rock solid. Mm -hmm. Save a ton of money. Santa Barbara Company, too. It is a great company. Yeah, they're up there. Um, these guys are just dedicated to it. And man, their HD faces is gorgeous. Like, I popped it up the other day, and I was like, what? Am I on a satellite or something? I'm on the interwebs? This is crazy. Um, so we have to wear makeup now for, for meetings? Basically, you're going to have to go into No, you actually should be thinking about lighting because and getting a second camera because the cameras in MacBook Airs, and the, you know, they're, not, they're not great. You should get the Logitech. It's the one we use. That's that Logitech. It's about this big, and it's under 100 bucks, but it's HD. You put that up here, and then what you need to do is just have a lamp over here, and you just take the top off the lamp. And then all of a sudden, you look like you're in a proper lit studio. And so I just do that for my board meetings and everything like that. And of course, I put a little makeup on for board meetings. I always, you know, whether it's in person or not, I put yeah. makeup on for board meetings. Yeah. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong cool. with that. It makes me feel pretty. It's LA. It's LA. <laughs> so um, what what is the... I want to ask you about the, the Google thing, but I don't want to obsess too much. I'm in the market actually right now for a scooter. I want to get a scooter because I want to be able to zip around here in Culver City. So how do, how do you get these results here? Um, how is this put together? You have a team of humans doing database stuff. You are 
finding other reviews? What, what am I looking at here? And how does this make, um, how does this help me make a better decision? So one of the things we found is that there's, there is no single way of getting data, right? Mm -hmm. So we use sort of three pri primary sources, four, four sources. Uh, one is we go out and we compile it. So for scooters, there yeah. is no data fee. We have to go out, we go to the each manufacturer website and we compile it. We don't do any scraping, uh, it's mm. all compiled. Uh, the next one is we do get data feeds. Um, so for example, when uh, for automobiles, we compare cars, we are pulling in data from the manufacturers, compiling it, but we're also pulling in stuff from the EPA, National Highway mm. Transportation Association, uh, all that stuff. Uh, the third one is people come in and they claim it. There's a crowdsourcing element. They come in yeah. and they update it because it's their best, vested interest to do it. Ah, so Honda might, I don't know if they have in this case or not, actually own this landing page here. They don't own it, but they can come in and claim it and they can Got it. update their information, keep it accurate. Um, uh, and anybody can seem to edit this. I have this an edit button right here, so yeah. I can edit and... It doesn't go live though, it goes through an editor. Right, so sort of like a uh, Wikipedia protected page or something like that. Yes. Where the edit gets held until somebody looks at it and makes sure you're not like giving it two stars because you make the Vespa. And um, then we then we do aggregate sort of expert ratings and. Uh, and that's, that's how you a lot of work. Which the search companies, everyone's looking for. They want the magic bullet, which is technology. Get a bunch right. of computers and all pulls it together. Right. Can't be done. Can't be done. So for us, it's technology. We call it TAG, technology assisted human curated. Perfect. Uh, I, I love it. And so, how do you now take what to me looks like really good results because I'm looking at the scooter results and I, these are some of the same conclusions I came to. Um, the Aprilia, yeah, there's the one I like. The Aprilia, that's one there of the good go. ones. Um, buy, and is there a buy now button? Is there a buy now button for a six thousand dollars scooter? I no, don't think not. so. Best of scooters, find the best. Oh, and so you do these badges to put on people's sites. Um, Fifty-five miles to the gallon. That is incredible. Um, you're doing electric bikes next, uh, that's coming out next week. I am so into electric bikes. You know, the Germany, obviously in China, they sell 100, 200 million of these a year. But in Germany, they're catching on. These electric assist bikes, and you don't need a driver's license, they go 15 miles per hour. A 20, up to 20 is, uh, I guess, the street legal. The street legal, yeah. yeah. Um, and they're starting to make them now, but they're super expensive in the United States. They are like, expensive. Five, six, seven thousand dollars. You could buy a scooter for that. And it's uh, like, yeah. These things should cost. There's one we I saw. It's ten thousand dollars. Like really? Mm. I'm just gonna buy a car. It's so uh, interesting. But that a lot of them are like two, two grand, three grand. You know what's interesting about that is it's, it's interesting that you guys came to that as something to research because I have been researching that like crazy. I actually talked about these, you know, the developing, you know, ecosystem of these electronic bikes and how in the United States, why is it that in the United States these things are costing thousands of dollars and in China they cost three hundred dollars and in Germany they cost. $600, and in America, there must be some price gouging going on that people are taking the German ones or the ones from it's China. It's a small market. Yeah, small market. It's more expensive labor. I mean, huh. I don't know. I can't imagine the bikes in China are great. I think a lot of people are bringing the kits from China here and attaching them to them. making them. I think that they're basically like aftermarket kits you put onto a bicycle in the gears. Um, so, so I mean, that's a that's a great example of a market, right? So electric bikes, no one's doing it. Right. So people ask us. I mean, all the VCs ask us, like, how can you how are you to make a market in this? Well, it turns out, what's great about these markets, like scooters and electric bikes, is there's not a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a ton of competition in credit cards. Right. Uh, but you go across, we have we have hundreds of these these pretty small vertical markets that are fifty thousand to fifty million dollars in size. Mm -hmm. uh, and they just can't spend the technology. You know, we're competing against sites in those areas, but these are schlocky, mm -hmm. pretty questionable sites out there. Yeah. So you're trying to build a brand that people can actually trust, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and so with the credit card stuff here, and, and how do you make money? Because I know that the, a lot of these credit card comparison sites are in on the take. They're not giving you the best advice. They're giving you the advice that gets them the largest commission on me applying and yes. getting a credit card. So where do you stand on that? Are you in my corner or in the corner of maximizing your revenue when I come to this landing page compared to credit uh, We'll never do that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think we're going to take the, we, we're gonna, we are taking the Google type approach, which is very clearly any type of form of advertising is going to be listed. But search results don't get dictated by who's paying the most money. Right. Uh, there is no pay to play. Right. And so how do you make money on this page? I guess you get an affiliate fee if people apply, but you can, all of them provide that anyway, right? Yeah, so I think you know our challenge is that uh, we will probably get less yield per page than uh, than these hardcore affiliate bank rate or whatever scams. Yeah, yeah. not that they're, they're a scam. not. No, 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 they're not. But other uh, ones, they actually got they got good data. We're in partnership yeah. with them. Yeah. Um, but you you know who I'm talking about the ones that are out there just 
landing pages. These are the 10 best. Yeah. A bunch of liars. Um, but on our side, we won't get as much yield as those guys, but we're going to get trust and traffic and, and everything so else. So how do you build a brand like this when Google's infringing on, or, or you know, coming into the space with this advisor product, which is clearly the same product. I mean, what is that? When did they come out with that? And then how do you react to something like that? Is it just confirmation like, oh, people are realizing that what we're doing is smart? Or is it like, oh my God, we've got Google Advisor coming in and they're doing 2% of what we're doing, but my goodness, like, yeah, I mean, it's sort I mean, of like your Yelp moment. Yeah, uh, it was. You know, we looked at that and said, geez, this is pretty similar. And you yeah. sort of do some digging. And I think they, I can't really say that much. Huh. Um, why, you in a lawsuit with them or something? Or no, 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 not, not at all. Oh. I mean, they're just, you know, they're, I don't think they're going to be nearly as, as, as broad as we are. Right. I mean, they're not going to have. I mean, they're going after certain areas like. They're, they're cherry picking. Mortgages. And mortga like they're cherry picking the top ones. But the interesting thing is, for a company like Google to do that, they were previously, their partners were providing that service, and they were buying ads from them. Yes. Now Google is saying to those bank rates or mortgage or lending tree or whoever, those were their big customers. And now they're saying to those big customers, lending tree and bank rate, screw you, we're doing it ourselves, and we're going to put ourselves above you in the search rankings. But I think you could also say that for every one of those good customers, yeah. there was probably five bad ones, questionable ones that you right. know shouldn't be in existence. They were giving. Uh, not accurate information, mm -hmm. uh, uh, illegal selling of leads. I mean, there was you know, you know how the market goes. There yeah, was there was just, a lot of there gray. was a lot of black hat, gray hat, yes, everything in between. And, so, I, and, and I think a lot of the problems that that happened there, right? So, uh, we're, we're of Google's. I, I think Google two years ago, in my mind, was in serious trouble. Their search results were getting were bad. bad. Yeah, were getting really bad. And these these guys who figured out a game the system were winning. Uh, and people are tired of it. So right. um, you think they did the right thing with Panda? Yes. Obviously. And now, now that they are pushing Yelp down and putting themselves above Yelp, pushing Bankrate and putting Google Advisor above them, and putting their travel results above people, putting their finance results above people, what do you think? Is it it's it's really Google's God-given right to do that, and the government shouldn't get involved, or is this something? I mean, you're a capitalist, so I don't think that you're crazy about the government getting involved in things, but. It seems like if there's a double standard. If Bing were to add these features, since they're not number one, nobody even notices. They wouldn't care. Nobody would care. But Google, because they have such power, when they push Yelp down the page and put themselves above it after trying to buy Yelp, I mean, is this just good old American competition? Or is it more like Microsoft bundling and trying to kill competitors, in I your mean, mind? I, I'm a hardcore libertarian, so right. not a psycho libertarian, but pretty hardcore. Yeah. Uh, so, you, so I mean, I I think a lot of what Google does is really really good. Yeah. Uh, as long as you know their algorithms don't, you know, are are are, are consistent and fair. Right. Uh, and a lot of this stuff, you know, it makes sense. You know, in hindsight, remember when the whole thing was uh, Microsoft shouldn't put a, a browser in the operating systems? Like, really? Well, of course they should. Yeah. That's but what that was it's whole, good for consumers. But that was a whole issue. So most of what, and this is where I think the Justice Department is going to have the toughest time, is what they're doing is good for consumers. Might not be right. good. Might not be good for the competitors. Right. Um, and how is it anti-competitive? People can switch their search engine. Yeah. Instantly. How, how many? How many search engines are are dead right now? All but. Remember all of them? Three. I mean, Google was. not In terms of crawls, there's only three crawls left. Yeah. Blecko, Bing. And Google are really the only, I mean, if you take Yandex and, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever, uh, Baidu out of the picture and, and Daum and, and we do. Naver, right? Like, forget those non-U.S. companies, but because yeah. they don't do US, U.S. search results, really, um, or provide a U.S. They product. They like to crawl, though. They love to crawl. We have to, like, shut them down because it's just like, why are you crawling us? You need to send us one person a month, you know? And it's like, this stop pounding crawling, your server? Just pounding. It's like, all right, go away. So if Google, playing this out in a Microsoftian kind of way, if Google decides, which I think they've made the decision already, I think Larry Page is gangster and just has made the decision, we're going to provide the best answer to consumers. We don't care who gets disintermediated. We're going to get you to the answer. We don't care about organic search results. Organic search results are a bridge to a Siri-like experience. Um, when they finish that, what is that going to do for the concept of search? They'll be out of the search business, essentially? The search will be the fallback to giving an answer? 
No, if I, I mean, if anything, I mean, I think they re reinvested in search. You know, they, I think they were taking their eye off the ball of search, and, yeah. and now they're very, very focused on it. Yeah. But search does come in many, you know, geographic search, local search, mm. you know, there's vertical search. Right. Um, so, you know, and, and Schmidt did a nice call out for us on Congress, said, you know, hey, we still have competitors, you know, find the best. And, and, and he yelled. did? So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so, in a way. So, I'd rather be sitting in his chair defending against antitrust than. Being yeah. used as the example of can you compete? Can you compete with somebody like Google, who's such an incumbent? I mean, clearly your product is better, yes. but you don't have their footprint, and you to get traffic need to go through either word of mouth or SEO. Yeah. I think we. How do you compete? I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure we can compete because we're in so many different markets that requires human curation. It right. requires. It is not. Uh, you know, a building full of computers uh, crawling. And, and I think Google tends towards to favor that. Right. right. The search engines do. Yeah. It's a great model. I wish we could do everything we're doing today with, you know, 10 computers. It'd be right. sweet. But it can't. How so much our Google approach is you got to do, you got to solve the problem in the right way. Right. Number one. And Google's not doing that? Or do you think Google's doing it, but they don't want to let on that they have that many humans doing it? I mean, my belief is they're doing a lot of human search. No. I don't you think don't, so. I think they have thousands of people testing the results. I think they have people testing the results. Right. But not compiling results. Not doing what, what, what we're doing. Yeah. Not saying this I mean, is our, better or that's better, making an editorial decision. Yeah. Just giving this is a bad result, this is a good result, and then they look at the algorithm, people look at that and use it as a variable. Yes. I mean, that's my understanding. They look at the results. What I typed in, did it return what was expected? Was there a good matchup? Right. They don't grade the site. Don't know if that happens or not, but and I think our our business is too ugly for them right now. Too hard, too ugly, too much. Ten work. years from now, could they do it? No. Why why not social and voting and all that kind of stuff? I mean, um, a lot of people would say, oh, this should be crowdsourced, you know, and people should just vote it and add it. I, I, is that just nonsense? And yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, I. I I agree. My belief. I mean, Wikipedia is, is, a, is an anomaly, right? Absolutely. So I don't think you could build that today. Uh, for us, our view is like if you can bring, most people are coming to us for the answer, right? They're right. not coming there to provide the answer. Right. So if you can provide 89%, 80 or 90% of what they're, what they're looking for, right. then they're going to come in and supplement it with corrections, additional information. Right. So light feedback, but not the core. Because it's uh, just game it to all hell. Yes. And in fact, we're. we're Wary of, of of a lot of like you know we're utility right so how do you integrate social into that how do you we don't want a bunch of you know and you you, you know how you know how it is right, right. there's a small Knuckle minority of people that just want to dominate you right. know their voice their opinions and everything else and it skews yeah I mean Yelp Yelp's got you know that's a the it's Yelp a effect's issue. a serious issue um, I interviewed somebody for a job at Mahalo and they told me that they're on their resume they previously worked at um, a, a PR company that specialized in Yelp reviews. Yep. And I said, what is that? And he goes, oh, well, we have a bunch of interns, and they have a bunch of elite accounts with pseudonyms, and we, they've built them up over years, and then they sell pseudonym things. And I said, oh, that's interesting. How do you get the clients? He said, oh, well, we go write three bad reviews of the place, and then we call them and tell them they have bad reviews. We can get them good reviews to drive the bad reviews down the page. I'm like, so you create the problem for them, and then you do Sweet. Yeah. Unbelievable. They go to jail. Is that like they a, probably, it is illegal, I think, now. Is it, there's an FTC? Yeah, I think the FTC some, uh, yeah. controls some of it. Yeah, doing fake reviews is probably not a great idea. So we have user reviews. I mean, that, that is part of our, you know, uh, one thing, it can't be anonymous. They have to, you know, they have to have a, a confirmed registration. Uh, mm -hmm. Most are coming through Facebook, so it's a real name. Uh, the anonymous stuff, and not to be confused with anonymous group, Right. don't want them. You don't want them Come, hacking you. Yeah. We love don't Anonymous. Want to them. Anon Anonymous is awesome. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> so uh, you don't understand. I have a special relationship with Anonymous. I, I direct. Heard. I direct some. I heard. I like some activities. That's what I heard. Yeah, I point them in certain directions. Uh, but you know the Anonymous guys that get on there and, and just rant, rave, spam. You know. Yeah. Make up stuff. Yeah. Um, and so how is the company funded? You just funded it all yourself? You have VCs behind it? How big is the company right now? How long have you been doing this now? It's like two or three years? Yeah, we launched uh, last August, about a year and a half. The site's been live. Yeah. Uh, KP's got six million into it. Uh, oh, wow. A Client. bunch of our money. Cool. Um, 
And so how many, uh, you, you must about have a 50 lot. 50 people. 50 people up in Santa Barbara doing this? Yep. How's Santa Barbara as a startup community? you got Sonos up there and you got GoToMeeting. It's Go to great. Meet. It's fantastic, isn't it? Huh? It's almost like, you know, per capita. Yeah. yeah it could be one of the one of the you know, highest tech cities out there. Yeah. It's just we don't have much capita. It's, you right. Know, it's a small 200, town. 200,000 people in that whole area. Right. So that's not much. You know, UCSB, great university. People want to stay. You know, for us, it's, it's great recruiting ground. Yeah. Um, and what about mobile? I mean, how, how does mobile change this whole buying experience? This morning, I literally was like, I love this hair gel. And I took out the Amazon app. I mean, I'm, I'm crazy about Amazon Prime. I don't know if you guys are. If you live in Santa Barbara, you must have Amazon Prime because you've got no stores up there. Yeah. So I take the hair gel that I love, and I, I scan the barcode. And it's like, oh, we have that on Amazon Prime three pack for 25 bucks. I'm like, I think I paid 25 bucks for this hair gel. Boom, auto order every six months I get, or whatever, every year I'll get a new thing. Um, how does this affect what you're doing normally? Uh, hair gel? No, yeah, how does hair gel affect we do? No, how does the mobile, you know? You've been a hair gel user for a while, too. Absolutely, I love it. You're one of the, er, the first- I was early the adopter hair gel. Early adopter. Absolutely, and obviously you are not. <laughs> you go for the surfer look. <laughs> I, I, I had to do, a, I guess the theme for my 50th birthday party my wife did was uh, Mad Men. So I actually wore it. You did wear, a little hair I gel? I did wear a hair gel. My wife's hair gel. Oh, um, nice. Mobile. No, nah, I, mean, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be great. I mean, yeah. I use it all the time, you know, going in, going in to buy a, a, a scotch, you know, what's, yeah. what's going to be the best scotch or a cigar or something. Or oh, have you done ACTV. categories like that? Scotch or cigars? Yeah. Wow. Where would I find that? Education, <laughs> sports, and recreation. You just type in cigar and <laughs> ah, got it. You cigar smoker? Um, I, you know, my dad smoked cigars and he got me into it, and I will smoke one a month or something. Um, but yeah, I like a. Uh, so you, you, you'll like this one, vodka, right? One of the biggest, time. one of the biggest marketing scams ever perpetrated on the, the world. Yes. Why? So, I mean, vodka by law is tasteless, odorless, colorless, right? Yeah. And so we ran, we took all the ratings and we ran an analysis on, on is there a correlation between ratings and price about good, good vodka? And there's nothing. Really? There's no correlation. Huh. So people spend, and this is one of the things that we we're trying to get to uh, uh, with the products, that people spend, uh, devote a lot of money to marketing. Doesn't make their product better, just makes it better in your eyes. Ah, so really helping people uh, get through that sort of nonsense. Are you a, are you a, a vodka no. aficionado? No. Oh, God. It drives me crazy when my when people can sw I would bet anybody anything they can't tell uh, vodka apart, other than the really crappy stuff. But that makes you go any blind. Any medium price. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so you, I can actually look here at price and, um, and the score and no. And so the score is based on what here then? Uh, you want, I'm not sure where you are. Vodka. Vodka. So right the there's probably going to be a bunch of, uh, if you hover over smart ratings, I'll tell you where the ratings came from. Ah, got it. At least it should. Or not. Are you hovering over the smart rating, the column? Oh, the column. Yeah, sorry. Smart oh, rating is the weighted average from scores from the international wine and spirit competition. It's the average from scores for, I got it. Interesting. I was on the, um, the actual score. So actually, you just went and found the people who actually were doing the testing and metacritic it out, yeah. Um, Metacritic's an amazing site, huh? I find it so accurate for movies. I love it, and, it's, and they were a big inspiration behind, behind you know, what we're doing, because... They only did five categories. Anyone can be wrong, any expert is wrong, as they are in, in movies, but rarely is the consensus wrong. Yeah, that's true. And you know, we love that in what we're doing here. And if we can unite that, we're, we want to bring in a bigger panel of experts. We have expert bloggers coming in and, and writing stuff. We want to get their expert opinions, right? right. So... Ah. So how are you going to incorporate those bloggers into all this? You just, you got to hire them and you make like a, a blogging layer in here? Yeah, for that one, I'm not sure there was a blogging, we have a tab where people can, can write. Ah, um, got it. Um, you know, they're blogging. We're not a blogging site, but it just kind of gives an additional got it. editorial flavor. Hey, let's play guest to fake startup. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay, so. So oh, you, let me explain to Kevin the, okay. names, the, the rules. <laughs> we're going to guess the fake startup. Okay. There's three. She's gonna read each three. <laughs> and we're gonna write ours down and you're gonna just go first. Okay. And there's yeah. two fake ones. No. There are, there's one there's one fake one, one two fake. real ones. One real, two fake. Yes. One real, two fake. Okay, so one real, okay, two fake. so there's one real. It's one real. One I think that's what I said. Wait, so no, two to real <laughs> two real, one fake. Okay. Wait a second. That's not what I'm, Carolyn told. I'm Carolyn told is saying 
two fake, one real. And we heard you don't even know the answer because... <laughs> I don't even know the answer. I have no idea. No I have a confirmation. You have no that. game face. There, I have so no we're going to guess, guess the real startup. Do you play poker? Guess the real startup. I do not. I do not play yeah. poker. Yeah, you're not going to get, get a read on her. Yeah. I don't know the answer, obviously. Um, I have no clue. Although, since they work for me and I pay them, I, I could have some influence. No. Uh, there's two fake, one real. So we're going to guess the real. Considering you're getting crushed every week. It, I know. It's proof that you don't. Cheating is not... Yeah. You know, I heard there was a game. You want to talk about crazy poker stories? Somebody told me these guys were running a game in the valley. Like, I wouldn't go to card rooms. There's all kinds of like legal card rooms they raid. I wouldn't go to those games because it's too dangerous and I don't want to be involved in shenanigans. Um, they had marked decks. It's like a high stakes game, like ten, twenty thousand dollars buy-in, and they had marked decks and they were using. Um, uh, there's a infrared kind of way you can put like an ink on it that if you're wearing a certain kind of glasses you can see. So you only need, I mean, if I know, damn, isn't that crazy? Yeah. And if you type in, if you type in marked decks into YouTube, you'll see videos of this, where they can just write with their finger like A on the card for A's with like a, a fluorescent gel that you can see through contact lenses or cards. It's pretty evil. Do not play cards in no. A. I'm not going to play Cards in the Valley. Don't play Cards in the Valley. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> okay, so the first company, it's Wanderer. WeWander.com. Okay, so mm -hmm. Wanderer is the easiest way to find the best photo opportunity, wherever you are in the world. We've extracted geotags from photos posted to social networks and services like Flickr and Instagram to compile the best database of locations to snap memorable pictures. Through our app for iPhone and Android, you'll get a push notification when you're nearby a great sightseeing opportunity. How many times do they use find the best in that in their description? <laughs> Would you like me to count? <laughs> no. Okay. No, you can count. <laughs> for sure. Okay, the second one. It's Safe Roam at saferoam.me. Safe Roam is a mobile app that helps you avoid coming home to a giant cell phone bill after you've been on the road. We aggressively guard your mobile data connection, minimizing your data usage in every possible way, from compressing data to re-rendering images to make sure you don't get hit with unexpected charges. $18,000 my wife got for wow. roaming. What? Whoa. AT&T iPhone. Wow. <clears throat> you know how much I paid? Zero. I negotiated down to? I, I tried to get a zero. It wouldn't do it. $50. Wow. So I like that. If it's not a startup, yeah, yeah, I like that. it should be. Wow. <laughs> okay. 18,000. Wow. What country was this? Paris or France or something? Was like it was right when the iPhone came out. It was, uh, it was all over Europe. All over Europe? Yeah. Wow. And Crazy. she didn't even use it. Uh, long story, but. Yeah, I got you. Go ahead. Okay. So that's a good, good product. Good not. product. Nice. <laughs> For yeah. sure. All right. All right clearly, so everybody would like that product. Definitely. Would be very useful. So the third, spread at getspread.com. <laughs> Come on. Spread enables anyone with a mobile device to capture newsworthy images and make them instantly available for news organizations and websites to buy. Hmm? We also let people submit photo requests to Spread's users so you can snap a photo wherever you are and get paid for it immediately. Okay, we have Spread, Ooh. which is... The uh, beginning was just a little we're too... We're guessing the real one this time? I'm, I believe we're guessing, you're guessing the real the one. It's too one. fake. Normally we guess the fake. <laughs> Normally right. Now we're playing now guess we're the guessing real. the real. The game has changed. Right. I need to hear the first one again. Okay. okay. The first one is Wanderer. We yeah. wander. Wanderer is the easiest way to get to find the best photo op wherever you are in the world. We've extracted geotags from photos posted to social networks and services like Flickr and Instagram to compile the best database of locations to snap memorable picture pictures. Through our app for iPhone and Android, you'll get a push notification when you're nearby a great sightseeing opportunity. Safe roam. Don't get an $18,000 phone bill. Mm -hmm. And spread, get spread, enables anyone to, with a mobile device to capture newsworthy images. Now, let me, before, you're going to go first. But before we do this, as, I want to ask you two questions. As a consumer and as an angel investor, as a consumer, would you use the product? As an angel investor, would you invest in the product? Wanderer, find the best places to take a picture. Would you invest in that? Probably not. Would you use it? Download the app? Probably not. Okay. Safe Roam? Uh, Assuming it worked, you know, minimized your data, you know, uh, usage protect you. Would you invest in it or buy it? Mm, I may use it. Okay, you may use it. Okay. And spread, would you invest in uh, spreading uh, newsworthy events? So what the hell, what's spread again? Spread it's enables just a anyone too. with a mobile device to capture newsworthy images and make them instantly available for news organizations and websites to buy. It's a marketplace for newsworthy images. Hmm. Get spread. These are really kind of good. 
good idea. All of them are pretty good ideas. This right. is tough. Right. And two of them are fake. And two of them are fake, which means I have to give it to Carolyn, yeah. who yeah, wrote she, these, yeah. that she wrote three that are all... Which, I, think, you know, what, I think what they've done is, my guess, they took stuff and they slightly modified it. No, I don't think so. You I don't think so? Are, well, that would, be, that would be a good way to do it. We're gonna, we'll bring Carolyn in, in after. Okay, <laughs> so take me through your thinking. Nope, not slightly modified. I got the confirmation. Ooh. Wanderer, safe roam, or spread? Wanderer? I just don't know how you make money. I, I'm gonna, I think that's real. You think Wanderer is real? Yeah. And so you think safe roam, not real, and spread, not real? No, I say spread's not real. Spread's not real. Only one of them is real. So now you're between safe roam and Wanderer. Which one's real and which one's fake? Oh. One real, two fake. So okay. you say spread I mean, is fake. So spread's fake and the, um, uh, uh, the first one. Wanderer is real. So Kevin says Wanderer is real. Tyler, take me through your thinking. I'm, I'm saying safe roam is real. Okay, Tyler says safe room is real. You didn't look what, it up. By the way, what did you Google on YouTube there? When I was in? typing in marked deck to show the video oh, of a marked deck. Right. <laughs> Little right. untrustworthy. Yeah. I was pulling up how to cheat at poker, sure. not how to cheat at this game. Okay. All right, now let me explain to you guys the right answer. I don't know it, but I'll explain it. Okay, Wanderer. <laughs> I'll just take you through by the my way, thinking. If, if this was poker, this is where you'd want to double down. <laughs> exactly. When he says something. Raise yeah, all in. Yeah. <laughs> Shove your chips <laughs> to the middle. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. Safe roam is not technically possible. I don't think. Maybe on Android it is. But sure, everybody would like that. But I don't think it's technically I like possible. I like your thinking. Um, we aggressively guard your mobile data connection, minimizing your data usage. Like Maybe on Android it would be available. But I know iPhone would not allow that. You'd have to jailbreak. So for me, that is a difficult one, but it has saferome.me as a name, which that actually makes it more believable to me because they wouldn't be able to get saferome at this late date to build an app. So I'm very concerned that that's a fake, but it's such a good idea, I could see it working for Android. Wanderer, wewander.com, the domain name has me a little concerned because it's a great domain name, but, and I do think that would be an awesome service, but I don't think that that's real. And I don't think saferome's real, but I do know that spreading that, that terrible of a name, an entrepreneur would actually come up with that bad of a name. I agree. Get, get spread, yeah. Get spread. It's a terrible name, and, yes. it, and it leads to people thinking about bad things. It's just yes. a terrible, horrible branding, yes. which means an entrepreneur would actually make that. Carolyn, Carolyn would not come up with that. No, I don't think she I would. I don't know another Carolyn. way to look at it. I don't know Carolyn. Right. right. Well, that's so I'm at a big disadvantage. disadvantage. You think yeah. you'd be so at a disadvantage, but the guest usually doesn't see, already know Ke Yeah, and, but already Kevin is now trying to hedge his bet. I, so, I, I agree with you. But see, and I think spread is... A great idea because people want to make money from their photos, and I so if it was a dedicated to just that service, and I look at these and I say, we, we wonder is not commercially ever going to work, but it will be an app that somebody would build as a passion project. Safe Room is an app people would actually pay for, mm -hmm. but how often only available on Android. How often are you in a situation where you took took a picture that is newsworthy? Oh, um, I've taken a couple pictures of car accidents. So yeah. yeah. And did they ever make the news? Car no, never no, make the but news. I. But You're every, in L.A. The man they happen. But I go. I go like backwards from the week. news. I go backwards from the news where. There are a lot of pictures that do make but, the news, so people could then. But there's go, no market. How many times in your life? That, that, let me the, tell you something. The ridiculousness of the idea does not determine. I'll tell you why. That's why what makes this game yes. impossible. Yes. Right. Yeah. Damn, Damn it. You love yes. it. <laughs> Here's the thing about spreading, and why I think this could work. We're overthinking this, aren't we? No, it's okay. It's the whole point. Is overthinking it, and that you have ex all those excuses when you lose. Um, the reason why spread it could be interesting is because if I was a news person and I'm doing the local news and I could see I could buy an exclusive of these videos or of these things and somebody says oh then you people might go out and say you know what? I'm going to take pictures at the Lakers game to sell to the LA Times could be fake then you get fired well if it's if it's an app and it has the location and it's in spread and they bought it and it's you know photo yes there could be fakes but I mean that's people could fake you know what they put into Getty images too that's yeah, hell, and so it's, anyway, and it's media. Yeah, how so much I, real does that have to be? Exactly. I mean, this is the local news. You think they check anything? I mean, no, I'm very tempted to change my answer to spread because of how well I handicap the game. Anybody else want to change? To no, spread? I'm sticking. <laughs> You're sticking with Wanderer. Yeah. Safe for anybody. Want to put ten dollars on it? You want to put a twenty dollar bill on it? I'll put. I'll put a twenty. You put a twenty on it. All right, here we go. Get 20? My wallet's over. Uh, Don't worry about it. You're good for it. We know you're good wallet. for it. I'm not taking any of those old <laughs> double click stocks. It's my 20. Got my 20 over here. It's 20. Tyler, you want to get on 20? No. I'll lend you to you. That's okay. All right, 20 bucks. Here we go. <laughs> All right, now if we're both wrong, we just take the 20 back, obviously. All right, here we go. I'm sticking with what, what was my one? You picked Safe Roam yeah. as the real. Kevin picked Wanderer as the real, and I picked 
Spread is the real. I think you guys might have it this time. <sighs> yum yum. So okay, we find Carolyn, it? could you uh, pull up the answer, please? Spread is real. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yes. Yes. I got did I just Kevin O'Connor money. Did I just get hustled? <laughs> <laughs> <That's you know? laughs> oh, wow. Like oh, oh, three card money. <laughs> <guys. laughs> what a total scam. <laughs> They're like. And nobody knows the I'll answer. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I'm, I can't take Kevin's money, but I will put it in the oh, chip jar. Oh, you should jar. take my money. No, I want, I'll take it at Parker later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting it in the chip this jar the for positive. the engineers. Th no, this goes towards the keg fund. Oh, for engineers? We now have about $8,000 in here, so I think we're going to basically take people to the Heineken. Or we take them to the Guinness factory in Dublin at this point because there's so much money that's being collected in here. It's for a poor, if it's for, I'm an engineer. If it's for the poor engineers, I'm, yes, I'm all for absolutely. it. absolutely. These very poor engineers. Um, hey, this is an amazing episode. Everybody go check out findthebest.com. Findthebest.com, findthebest.com. And you can follow Kevin O'Connor at KJP O'Connor. And thank you to our friends at Liquid Web. Thank you to Tyler for an amazing insight. And thank you at GoToMeeting. And thank you for Carolyn for uh, writing up the game correctly, doing a good job. Thank you very well, Carolyn. I won, so it's a good job. And um, we'll see you all next time on This Week in Startups.